prepare to get gas because it's time for the week in gear. This week we have a rather polarizing Fender Signature Strat, Boss finally release a much awaited pedal and the biggest news in guitar gear collaborations since Gibson called Les Paul and asked Les Paul if he wanted to put his name on a Gibson guitar and call it the Gibson Les Paul. <gasps> also, this show is brought to you by Guitar Leg. More about that shortly. Okay, let's kick off this week's most exciting gear releases with a fuzz pedal. The Mandrake is a new transistor-based analog upper octave fuzz from KMA Machines. That's a mouthful. It's based on their Shriek circuit from their Moai pedal. I think that's how you say it. The Mandrake has controls for dry and octave mix, as well as a filter and timbre, lovely word, which seems to act like a gain control, but I, I love the word. I will admit it is my love for Harry Potter that drew me to this pedal and I had no idea that the mandrake was a real plant. Anyway, when I saw that it was a fuzz, I had to hear it and the official demo video takes the tone from sludgy doomy to bluesy pretty well. Accuracy of the upper octave seems to be a main focus here as analog octave fuzzes can sometimes misbehave. So it is great to see KMA giving so much attention to being in control of that naughtiness. It's available now, it's about 170 bucks and there are links in the video description. Actually, before I move on, this is one of those pedals that I would like on my board purely for the looks, which is wrong, I know, but I think it looks great and my kids would love it. At number four this week is a pedal I have been waiting for for what seems like decades. The Boss RV200. This new reverb from Boss has 12 reverbs, including a new one called Up Verb. It's got lots of knobs and controls rather than submenus upon submenus. There's 127 preset slots. It's got a stereo input and stereo output and you can control it with MIDI. Pretty much the same as the other 200 series pedals, but this one's finally the reverb. I checked out the official release video and whoever is playing that guitar makes this pedal sound mwah, beautiful. Now, a few years ago, we got a whole bunch of Boss 200 series pedals, but the reverb was noticeably missing from the lineup. And every time they released a new 200 series pedal, I thought, cool, but where's the reverb? Well. It's here now and it's coming in at around 300 bucks and there is no doubt that this RV200 delivers some great reverbs, but I am a little concerned that Boss have left it a little bit too late to bring out a reverb pedal in this price range when there are already so many pedals available, such as ones from UA and or Strymon or Walrus Audio, to name just three. I do, however, think that the RV200 will do well because it's a Boss and the 12 reverbs in it are surely going to reliably cover most people's needs. Just realize that RV is also a recreation vehicle. That's fun. Before we get to number three on the list, it's time to talk about this week's sponsor, Guitar Leg. Guitars are great, but if you stand them up, they do tend to fall over a lot. It's almost as if they weren't designed for that. But what are we supposed to do when we need to put our guitars down? Lay our precious instrument on the floor or up against a wall? So what's the solution? Enter Guitar Leg. It's the stand that sticks to your guitar, allowing you to go about your business when you're not noodling the pentatonic scale or strumming Wonderwall. It's easy to attach and it folds flat when you don't need it. Guitar Leg. Give your guitar a leg to stand on. Follow the link in the video description for more info and availability. To talk a little bit more about the sponsor this week, I originally said no to Guitar Leg because I originally thought the idea was a little bit silly, but after trying one, I changed my mind. Um, guitar Leg is not intended to be used on your high-end guitars, but as a street musician and music educator, I think the guitar leg is absolutely a great way to always have some way to stand your working guitar upright. And then when you want to take it off, you just do that and it's almost like it's not there. Well, I can't feel it. So guitar leg is a serious product and it does seem ridiculous at first, but I stand behind that I would use that, or I am using this on my working guitar because it's much more convenient than the alternative. Although I can't get it back on now. Hang on, there we go, there, back on. One hands-free standing guitar. Third on the list is a surprising signature guitar, the Bruno Mars Fender Stratocaster. Yes, 
Bruno Mars. Now, I'll get on to him in a moment, but first, the specs. This is a very classy looking guitar, and it has an ash body with American Ultra contours, so it's a modern strap body, with a Mars Mocha Heirloom, trademark, nitrocellulose lacquer finish. It's a compound radius maple fingerboard with stainless steel frets, a two-point trim locking tuners, and Bruno Mars custom-voiced pickups, which includes a noiseless bridge pickup. The guitar comes in a hard case, yippee, and there's an extra pick guard in there should you fancy a different color, and a furry leopard print strap. Yeah, baby. So, a very interesting spec for a USA Fender, and I don't know if it's the Tom DeLong that turned me, but I certainly love the large headstock on it. I dig it, and I don't know why exactly. The smaller ones now, to me, look wrong. But let's talk about Mr. Mars for a minute minute. I went down a bit of a YouTube and internet rabbit hole on this one because while I enjoy Bruno as a performer, seeing him get a signature guitar is a bit of a weird one because I didn't really know him as a guitar player, and I'm pretty sure that most people don't. But I've seen him pictured with the guitars, never really considered him a real player, until I found his performance at the Grammys. And yes, that man can play. So, to all the people that are accusing Fender and Bruno Mars of releasing this guitar purely as a cash grab, this is for you. Just because a company releases a new product, doesn't mean that you have to buy it. I bet there are hundreds of products released every day that you don't even register. But for some reason, guitar players appoint themselves the judge and jury of the guitar scene when barely contributing to it themselves. So, there we go. Soapbox time over. I'll sit back down. What I'm trying to say is just let people have their fun. Go buy a different guitar or stick with the one you've got. That being said, I hope to see Bruno using this on stage because not only is it a very well specced Fender Strat, I think it is extremely eye-catching and completely gorgeous. And having someone like Bruno Mars playing guitar on stage might inspire more people to pick up the guitar, thus bolstering the guitar industry as a whole. Almost went into rant mode again there. The Fender Bruno Mars Strat is available now for around 3,000 bucks, which is a lot of money, but that look and that spec is going to appeal to a certain group of people, me included. And actually, when I showed this to the other guitar player in my band, he agreed with me. It's a stunning guitar and I want to play one. Number two, Mark Tremonti and PRS have released the MT100, a three-channel 100 watt amp designed to do all the things that Mr. T needs. Clean, overdrive, and high gain. This is the second amp from this artist collaboration, and the first being the two-channel 15 watt MT15. And since that amp did extremely well, now they've gone for the big brother. The MT100 has eight, eight? Yep. The MT100 has eight 12AX7 valves in the preamp and four 6L6 valves in the power amp. It's a lot of valves. My favorite thing about this amp is that each channel has independent presence, master volume, bass, middle, treble, and gain controls, effectively making this three amps in one. There's also an effects loop, which is necessary because there's no inbuilt reverb, and there's a socket for a proprietary foot switch. Proprietary. There's a custom foot switch that is included with the amp. Now, when I started putting this list together this week, I am far more excited about this amp than I initially was because I remember back to playing the MT-15 at Tolman, I think in 2018, and I really loved it. It was one of the most fun amps I'd played at that time. But this 100 watt version could actually cover all the things you need, a little bit like the is it the HT venue stage from Blackstar? Yeah, that sort of does it all thing, reminding me of my Marshall Valve estate from back in the days. Anyway, if you need a tube amp and you want something that does it all, you could try this because I need to try it. I'm not fully convinced by the overdrive channel yet. But the most surprising thing for me is the price. It's coming in at around 1800 bucks, 1,800, which is still a big chunk of change, I know, but it is about 700 bucks less than I was expecting. Now, PRS don't tend to work with YouTubers like me, but this is one of those amps 
I absolutely need to try. So I will find some way. In fact, maybe you could all write to Paul and say, get Andy the guitar geek to have a look at your amp, please. Thank you very much, Paul. I love it when gear makes me feel this way. Before I get to my pick of the week, this week was quite tough to get down to just five most exciting things. So here come some things that didn't quite make it, but got really close. So first, an honorable mention to the Pod Go, which has had the massive free update to version 2.0. In the update is a new cab engine, which allows you to move mics around and do stuff like that. There's some new cabs, there's new amps, there's new effects, and this skyrockets the value of the Pod Go. Well done, Line 6, for continuing to support your hardware. I hope Fender are paying attention. Secondly, the Kramer Beretta has been crafted in Japan and is a painstaking tribute to the guitar that changed music forever. Those are direct quotes from the website. I've never played a Beretta, but whenever I see one, it always excites me and makes me think, oh, I wish I played guitar. And then I realize I do, and, and that makes me laugh. But with almost the exact original 1983 specs at $2,199 with a hard case, yay! This is going to make a lot of shredders happy. Finally, Thorpe FX have released two new limited edition pedals as part of their Vintage Reimagined series. There's the Fuzz Face based Tacit Blue Germanium Fuzz and the Rangemaster based have blue germanium boost. It's a lot of germanium, Adrian. As always, the pedals look fantastic and there are some wonderful demos out there. I recommend you have a look at one or two. Andy's pick of the week. My pick of the week this week is, I think for the first time, not really a product, but a future product. If I asked you to picture Slash and Slash's rig, in your head, my guess is that without even thinking about it, your mind would go to a Gibson Les Paul and a Marshall stack and probably a black leather top hat. It's one of the kinds of rules of modern guitar and it's a classic combo with great marketing. Well, get ready for that picture in your head to drastically change because after 30 years with Marshall, Slash is now switching over to Magnetone amp. According to Slash, they are already working on a 100 watt version of the Magnetone M80 with a matching cab. And what's kind of weird is the M80 is a British voiced, British voiced, British voiced amp in the style of Marshall, which is kind of confusing to go from Marshall to a Marshall style. Anyway, for those of you who want to get ahead of the game, the Super 59 M80 is already available and it doesn't come cheap, which makes me wonder how much a Slash signature would cost, but I don't think you're gonna get much change out of five grand. This is the biggest news in the guitar gear world for a long time. I, I, I honestly cannot believe that Slash has left Marshall. It's nuts, it's like the sun became the moon or, or, or the sun left one day. Anyway, artist endorsements are one of the main focuses of brands these days. In this list alone, we have the Bruno Mars Strat and the Mark Tremonti Amp, and why? Because it sells products. Regarding Slash's switch to Magnetone, I can only assume that when Marshall was doing the buyout deal with Zound Industries, they couldn't quite afford to give Slash in that package, which makes me wonder how Magnetone afforded him. Actually, I would not be surprised to see Slash as part owner of the company, or maybe using Magnetone as a little stopgap until he comes out with his own range of amps in Slash's amp company. I have nothing concrete to base this on, I just figured that would be fun. But I did reach out to the CEO of Magnetone, as Ted and I chat fairly often, but he is understandably rather busy right now. What I can be sure of is that Magnetone's marketing department, if they have one, will be very busy in the foreseeable future, and I might need to buy myself a little uh, top hat. Thank you to the supporters of this show who now have their names on screen, and a very special thank you to the top tier members. Buddha Blue! This prank is officially sponsored by Jason Welch. Buzzle. Boom shakalaka. Sarang Narayan. Hi Sarang, nice to meet you in Andertons last week. Josh Tanberg. Gary O'Neill. 
Stephen S. April Kurtz. Alinta Boston. Doug Paget. Dustin Bonney. And Michael Lerner. If you would like your name up in lights, then click the join button right here on YouTube somewhere or visit my Patreon link in the video description. And while you're clicking things, go ahead and click right there to subscribe to the channel and be kept up to date on all new Guitar Gear releases. And while you're there, don't forget to comment your pick of the week down in the comments section. Remember, it's not important what you play, it's important why you play, or something like that. Anyway, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.